Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are talking about how to close more sales as a travel agent, what you need to do, how to make more sales, how to increase your profits, do the same amount of work, but actually make more money. Isn't that what everyone wants to do? Yes, we're gonna cover that today. If that sounds like it will help your business and help you grow this year, then keep on watching. By the way, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you haven't already. We send out new content every single week that helps you continue to grow your travel business, and we know you don't wanna miss any of that valuable content. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, if you're new here, I wanted to say welcome. If you wouldn't mind, pop a little comment below. Just type new in for me so I can say hello. I would love, love, love to meet you. And if you are new here, you probably don't know who I am. You're like, who is this lady with these fabulous like pineapple earrings? My niece got these for me for Christmas. I'm, in, I'm obsessed with them. Uh, but you're like, who is this lady? I'm Cindy Williams. I started in the travel industry over 25 years ago. I have my own award-winning, nationally recognized travel agency that I operate and run. And I'm also the CEO of Careers on Vacation, which helps people launch, grow, and supersize their travel businesses, people just like you. And that's my love and passion, sharing knowledge and all of the crazy things I had to learn by trial and error through 25 years in this industry and uh, we're gonna share some great content with you today so let's get started now that we're friends all right we're talking about how to close more sales as a travel agent you guys increasing your sales is so powerful when I started in the industry I was just a baby 19 years old is when I started I worked for one of the biggest travel country travel brands in the country at the time RCI travel and I was kind of a natural salesperson but as a part of uh my education, learning, going through sales training, and working with the amazing team that I did, I had my first million dollar year, my first full year as a travel agent, which was kind of phenomenal. They had about 300 agents in their network at the time, and about 12 or 14 of us were in that top tier of selling a million dollars or more a year. And keep in mind, travel was less back in the 90s, right? So that was a lot of vacations. But through that process of selling so many trips, I really learned how to get skillful at the art of sales. And it really is an art. Um, and there's so much tied into being a good salesperson and how to have better sales. So we're gonna talk about all of that today and really tangible things you can do to help you along on your path too. So let me give you my best, best tips. We're gonna kind of break these down. My first thing that I want you to do to improve your sales is identify your goal. When I walked into that company at 19 years old, I remember every month they would post the top salespeople and I remember thinking, I wanna be up there. I wanna be on the billboard by the lunchroom, right? Like, I wanna see my name in that top 10 list of, of performers for the month or whatever. So identify what is your personal goal. You're not competing against anyone else. There's enough abundance in this industry for all of us, but I want you to set a big goal for yourself. What do you wanna do this year? And then what do you wanna do for each month, right? Break it down and have a tangible goal. Part of manifesting, and you guys know I'm, I'm a big believer in mindset. That's something we put in all of our programs at Careers on Vacation because when you change your perception and you put real education, knowledge, and power behind that, you can really transform anything. So, but the first step of manifesting is really what would it feel like to hit that goal? What would it mean to your family if you sell a million dollars and travel this year? Right? How much would that? How much increase would that mean to your bottom line for your your family or the things that you guys want to do? What would it change in your life? So I want you to get clear on what that goal is, and I also want you to spend a little time thinking about how that would change your experience, how much you would love your job, or how you know what would you do with that extra income that you would be earning. And then once you identify what the goal is, and you kind of feel the feelings of what it would feel like to hit that goal, and how amazing that would be, I want you to post it as many places as possible. I keep my goals on my phone screen. So like every time when my screen pops up, all of my goals, I have a bunch of them here, but they're on my screen. How many times do you look at your phone every day? That's how many times my goals are in my face. So that's where I post mine. I also have a vision board in my office and I keep one in my closet where I get dressed every day. So I'm like, literally, I have my goals all over the place because I'm trying to accomplish big things and I'm always reminding myself like, oh, I'm supposed to be working on that, I'm supposed to be working on that. And it's just a great visual reminder to keep it 
you know, front of mind and keep it present in your everyday environment, okay? So post it. The other thing I want you to do when it comes to goal setting is track it. Every month, I want you to check back in. Like if you're giving yourself two or three big goals, I know this is part of our January series, you know, new year, new you, and all the good things. Whatever goals you're working on, that tracking and checking in every single month to go, did I hit the mark? Did I not hit the mark? And by the way, I am not like a, a big proponent of New Year's resolutions because it's the whole, oh, I tried it, but I failed. I'll try again next year. I freaking hate that mentality. Part of like doing big things in your life is trying it, failing, and keep going. You keep going. So there's going to be failures in on your road to success, right? That's part of the process. So when you don't hit a certain goal, it doesn't mean you give up. It just means like, what do I need to adjust to like do better next month? So that, but I do like the idea of checking in every single month. I set big goals for the year, just like everybody else on an annual basis. I check in every single month on how we're doing. And then quarterly, I adjust our major goals. Last year, 2020, right? Like first quarter, we went in with this huge plan for the year. And by second quarter, we're like, oh my God, we got to rewrite this whole thing because we have no idea what's going to happen, what could change, how are we going to survive as a company, Are we? what's going to happen, right? So we had to pivot and we had to make changes. So that's normal. That's part of the process. And by the way, we actually had one of our best years ever last year, which was amazing. But it was because we just had that mindset of keep going, never stop marketing, adjust the goals, find a way, you know, I always say good entrepreneurs, they go up over around and they find a way to make things happen. So I having this written posted thing will help you stay on track. And that's really all this section is about. What's that crazy goal that you want to set? get it in front of your face, track it on a regular basis, and remember to like, remember what you're working for, right? And by the way, if you came across this video and you're like thinking about getting into the travel industry and you're like, well, let me learn a little bit more about it, I have a great free masterclass you can take. You can go to cruiseonvacation.com. There's links for it there, or you, oh, the direct link is cruiseonvacation.com forward slash masterclass. That will give you a good idea of the different ways to get into the travel industry and the really the top things you need to do to be successful in the industry. So that's a great free class that you can take. We came up with that masterclass because we we're just getting hundreds of requests on social media about Cindy, do you think it's right for me? So that was my way of like giving back, go grab that free class that will help you out if you're in that aspiring phase or you're a new agent and you just need to generate some good ideas. Um, but let's continue with the sales content for today. So number two thing that I want you to do if you're trying to improve your sales in your travel agency is I need you to look at and reform your beliefs about the sales process. This comes up quite a bit in the clients that we work with in our Careers on Vacation Mastermind where they're like, I don't want to be pushy with people. I don't want to be, you know, you're nobody wants to be like that gross car salesman that's like, oh, you got to sign on this deal today or the world's going to end. Like nobody wants that. Customers don't want it. You don't want to be it. And here's the good news. You don't have to. There's a totally different way to look at sales where you can be highly effective and it can be a win for both parties. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So, um, quick thing as we're building out the rest of this curriculum in the weeks to come i want you to pop me a comment below in comments if you don't mind tell me what makes you most nervous about sales why do you hate sales why are you watching this video today there's something in your sales process that you know you need to get better at tell me what that is and that helps us create more content for you so a lot of times what we hear is um i don't want to be pushy i don't want to be aggressive i don't want to be bothering people um Here's some of the things I want you guys to think about. You don't have to be any of those things, number one. But what I do want you to recognize is where a lot of you guys start from in the selling process is you think about building this trip. You spend all these hours building a proposal. You get everything kind of put together and then you get to the finish line and you hesitate. Why are you hesitating? That's what I want to address today. So why you're hesitating is because of your beliefs about sales, not because of your client's readiness to buy. Does that make sense? So when I was in, uh, when I worked for RCI, one of the VPs came in and did a training because they were doing this big initiative to increase sales across all the agents. And um, the VP said something I'll never forget. She said, look, I know a lot of you guys are young. She said, I know some of you are in college and I was, I was in college, I was like eating Raymond soup. I was like living paycheck to paycheck, like balancing college and working full time and all the things. And I couldn't afford to buy the types of vacations I was selling. 
and she said you cannot sell travel based on your pocketbook she said these clients in our network the clients that we target and that we market to we have the data on them the average client makes over a hundred thousand dollars a year they take six vacations a year you know that and they had a very dialed in idea of who their clients were and they were targeting these clients they had that data which by the way in today's environment you can totally do but that's marketing and a totally another video but the whole point being is as soon as that like revelation happened in my brain like oh my gosh these people have so much money they go on vacation six times a year it was like revolutionary for me so don't sell the vacation based on what you would do or based on what your pocketbook can afford sell the vacation based on what they ask for and what their budget is a $25,000 vacation to some people is not a big deal. They do two or three of those a year. We have clients like that. We have clients that do $50,000 safaris and we have clients that say, hey, I want you to uh, you know, let my parents travel wherever they want. Here's my Platinum American Express, just bill it to my card. You know, no, no budget, just keep me posted on where, where they are in the world. There are clients like that, you guys, I promise you. So understanding and lifting that, uh, you know, belief that limiting belief out of your brain about sales is really key especially if you're new in the industry especially if you're young like I was 25 years ago starting out you might not be able to afford the $25,000 you know honeymoon to Hawaii but you know someone's dad might be but that might be their wedding gift to them right so keep in mind you're not shopping from your pocketbook and just remember that piece as you're building whatever their budget is is their budget the other thing is um remember what you do for people, right? And you're gonna say, well, Cindy, what I do is I sell vacations and I help people and I, you know, no, like I want you to get like really clear about what you're, what you do. And there was a really good survey that was done. Um, oh my gosh, I can't remember who the survey was, but there was a survey that surveyed a lot of the people that were like in their 80s and 90s and they just were interviewing them about things they would do differently in their life. And one of the things that they said was, I wish I would have followed my dreams more. I wish I would have traveled more was in there. And then they asked them, you know, what are your, your biggest memories? Oh, the time I spent with my family, the time we spent traveling, those things were all in there. And I want you guys to like feel the goosebumps right now because this is what you really do for people. You are the way showers, you're the dream makers, you are delivering the moments that when people get to their 80s and 90s and they're looking back on the highlights of their life, that's gonna be the vacations that you're sending them on. That's why I've always felt so amazing about what I do in this industry is like, I'm sending this, fam this uh, six families on this group trip that they're never gonna forget. They're always gonna remember this vacation or this honeymoon or this whatever, all the things, right? you are delivering those things that are like such a life experience that is such a powerful and big thing that we do and if you sit with that in your core and understand that is what you are doing for people how could that ever be pushy or weird no you're matching them with what they want and you're helping deliver this amazing thing into their life so i want you to feel good about what you do what you've chosen as your life's path because that is what you really do it's not about the airfare that you book or checking to see if they're checked in or you know we do all those little things too but the real power and what you're really doing what you've chosen to do with your life is to be like the memory the the, the dream giver right the dream maker if you will that's really powerful guys um and good sales think of it as instead of the sleazy car guy, right? Think of it as an opportunity to make a new friend and to add them to your family of clients. If you approach it, like when we talk to clients, I always say, you know, the type of clients that really work best with our agency are the ones that expect to be treated like friends and family. You are considered an extension of our family. I would do the same love and care that I would do for my own mother's vacation. That's the type of love and care you're gonna get through our agency. So if you're building that culture in your company and explaining that and taking that time to do that onboarding process right with your clients, it doesn't ever feel weird. So it's a, in the other thing is too, like they want to go on a good vacation. That's why they called you. So it's just about matching their needs and pulling those things together. But again, it's this whole conceptual thing of your beliefs about sales that sometimes hold you back. So erase that and think about like, I'm adding a new client to our family of clients today. I'm going to listen. I'm going to match their needs. I'm going to advocate for them and see how that feels different. You see how that feels different in the sales process. You're not the sleazy cars guy. That's not you. That's not what you're about. 
So get those like old beliefs stripped out of the idea of sales and move forward with, I'm gonna help this person, they're part of our family of clients and here's how we treat you at our company kind of verbiage, okay? Um, now let's talk about specific things you can do in the close process that will absolutely help you. After you've removed some of this conceptual stuff, you're not selling from your own pocketbook anymore, you know what your goals are, so now you need to make some sales. What are some things you can do in the actual sales process to make you close more sales? So first of all, industry standard is about 30% for a close rate. If you're an excellent agent, you're selling above 30%. If you're struggling, you're selling below 30%. But selling out of every 10 leads that you get, selling three is pretty much average. So hopefully you're doing that, which is great. But just don't feel bad if you're not. These are That's why you're watching this video. <laughs> so you're gonna be fine. Um, and if you're above that, great. But you can always, even if you're at 35 or 40, you can be above. With my established clientele, my close rate is way higher than that but of course I've worked with clients for years and years and so you will see that close rate go up as you get better at business but what else can you do in the meantime to help the first thing you should do is be positioning yourself as an expert what do I mean by that a lot of times when you're starting your business out you're dealing with cold calls people that don't know you people that have never worked with you before and they get you on the phone like well why should I work with you and well let me tell you all the benefits you'll get when you work with me and it's like exhausting right there are things you can do in your automation in your process and your operations that will position you as an expert before you ever get on the phone with them and also some of your lead flow issues, why people aren't calling you or why you're not getting leads, you might not even realize could be because of poor branding or because the image of your company or you as an agent somewhere out there is not resonating with your target audience. So really doing a self-assessment on those things and making sure that you're presenting in a way that is impactful and powerful and brings you the type of clients that you want that's really important. So can think about positioning yourself as an expert. So do you guys see how that feels different? Like having clients line up that want to work with you, that is such an amazing feeling when you have that switch. These are things that we teach our clients all day long, even if they're brand new agents, you can position yourself as an expert based on your travel experience and the knowledge that you're learning ongoing as you're becoming a travel agent. So expert positioning is very important to make the sales process just work like butter. <laughs> it just helps so much. Um, the other thing is, are you asking for the sale? So many times when we're troubleshooting with our clients is we'll listen to a call or, or, or they'll do a role play or they'll say, I'm getting stuck here when I'm, you know, so close to this client selling I did all this work and I'll say well walk me through like how the conversation went so many times they're getting to that pivotal moment in the conversation and they go what do you think about it or they don't just go for like the assumptive clothes or a choice clothes we did a video a few weeks ago about different types of clothes types so check that out too but are you asking for the sale if you're not asking for the sale that's is impacting your close rate so much. You've done the work, you've run the marathon. Don't run the marathon and then get right up to the finish line and go, oh, I'm gonna tiptoe backwards now. If you have any hesitation in that sales process or that close process, your client's gonna hesitate too. Where they're like, well, should I like it? Or I don't know how I feel about it. Why are you asking me? Aren't you the professional? So just curtailing your sales conversation a little stronger in that close section that is really key. So think about, are you even asking for the sale? Are you going, so you guys think about it for a few days. No, that's like death. That's death to your sale. You just did all this work for nothing. If you know you match them with their needs, you know that it's the best fit for them, you have to stand in that moment of power and go, boom, close the sale. So just remember, every single proposal you do, you should be asking for a sale. Which brings me to the next one. Are you doing actual proposals? Or are you emailing quotes and waiting? So this is another thing that happens all the time. People are like, I keep emailing people quotes and then they just go book themselves. <laughs> yeah, because you just gave them all the information. Why do they need you? You did the hours of work, didn't get paid, you send them an email and now they're like price shopping online or like, oh, it's just easier, I'll just buy it here. And it's people that you didn't either establish a report, the onboarding or qualification, they didn't feel a connection or something didn't happen in the right way there. And then you email them everything they needed to book it on their own and they're like, bye, right? That's like so discouraging when you're new and if you're watching this video and it's happened to you, I get it. So you need to stop emailing quotes and consider doing video proposals. That is so important, that helps a ton. The other thing is once you, um, and 
and let me preface that by saying at least with new clients do video proposals once your clients establish you can do more email so your process is faster but with those new ones until they're established and they know they're part of your new family of clients you want to avoid as many emails as possible and and do that stuff in video so you can close the sale on that first sale um the next thing is follow-up what is your follow-up process this is another area where there have been so many studies done. Asta did a study a few years ago and they said on average, agents tell them they have to follow up six times in order to close a sale with a client that is new. Six times, you guys. Most of you are giving up after two or three. Well, I don't wanna bug them. I sent them the information, they're not calling me back and then you just give up, right? No, if you took the time, like if they called you, you took the time to build it, you had a great conversation, like what happened? Either You either have to get feedback on what happened or get some resolution. Again, if you're doing video proposals, it's a little easier because you have them right there, they're engaged and you're continuing to build the rapport. But you have to continue to follow up. When we give a proposal, if someone doesn't make a decision right there, we set the next meeting. We don't go, okay, get back with me when you feel like it. No, have a process, right? So have a follow-up process in place that you're gonna follow, have more follow-ups than you think you need, and that will improve your sales, I promise you. Um, and another tip, if you're dealing with a lot of tire kickers, Usually if you're getting a ton of tire kickers, it's because your marketing is probably, you're either not doing paid marketing or you're just working with friends and family, which we all know it's not always the best client to have. Uh, the other thing is to consider fees to filter out those tire kickers or people that are just looking for you to do all the research and then give you the information. That will help you get rid of tire kickers in your system. So consider that as well. So let's recap. Top three ways to improve your sales this year. Set a goal, post it and check in on a regular basis. Reshape your beliefs about sales, that's so critical. Improve your sales processes, right? That follow up, how you're giving quotes. All of these things, guys, will help you improve your sales overall. And listen, if sales has continued to be a challenge for you, or if you're newer in the industry and you are like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed, there's marketing, there's how do I be a good agent, now there's sales layer, I wanna be successful at this career, but sales continues to be a challenge for you and you're looking for something a little bit more, that's what we do in careers on vacation and on the sales side of things we give you sales scripts sales processes how to present proposals the you know how to do those video proposals we do a video challenge to get you comfortable on video how to do um we have sales demonstrations on how a conversation should go back and forth with a client tools for expert positioning a complete sales system and marketing is a so much of the program as well how to improve those leads that come through you get better leads you're going to have better sales so i invite you to apply for careers on vacation you can go to careersonvacation.com forward slash ready now and uh, apply for that or you can get more information about the program by just going to careersonvacation.com if you'd like to learn more we are asked to affiliated asked is the american society of travel advisors in Careers on Vacation, you get access to my team of experts. It's a self-paced curriculum where you get hands-on support. Yes, you get to work with yours truly. I am on calls every single week to help you in a Q&A format on everything that you need. And this is also the program you guys have probably heard about. We have 100 plus case studies right here on YouTube. You can check out those videos too, uh, sharing our success stories of people just like you that uh, either starting out their journey as an aspiring agent or maybe you're an experienced agent but you just need to plug in better sales, better marketing. We have a new agent track and we have an experience track. So based on which level and kind of where you're at experience wise, we plug you into the right program and uh, we help you from there. And um, if not, I still wish you so much love, so much abundance. I wish you the world. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Please give us a big like if you enjoyed this content. And I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye, guys. here if you like that last video make sure you check out my other content to help you grow and scale your very own travel business and also I invite you to travel around the world with me and find out what I'm doing in my portable profitable award-winning travel business check out the videos